Suppose I again fit a Cox model looking at the relationship between time to death and smoking age and systolic blood pressure at baseline among Framingham participants who were 40 to 44 years old at the initial interview. As we saw in class, we can use residuals to summarize the fit of the model and look for any outliers or figure out what functional form a covariate should enter the Cox model. To predict residuals from a Cox model, we again just use the predict command and the type of residuals that you want to predict are specified after the comma as we've seen with other types of models. So if I want to predict martingale residuals, which I'm going to call mresid, I'm going to use the mgale option. If I'm interested in deviance residuals, we'll call those dresid, I'm going to use the deviance option. And lastly, if I'm interested in Cox-Snell residuals, we'll call those c resid. I'm going to use the option C-Snell. If I scroll down in my data set, you can see that I now have Martingale residuals, Deviance residuals, and Cox-Snell residuals in my data set. We're not going to look at how to plot the Cox-Snell residuals. It's beyond the scope of this class, but it's easy to find via a simple Google search. We can look at the Deviance residuals as a function of the model linear predictor to look for outliers. To estimate the model linear predictor, we need to say predict We'll call it x beta and use the option x beta. What this gives me is the coefficient for smoking, we'll call that beta 1 times smoking plus beta 2 times age plus beta 3 times systolic blood pressure for everyone in my model. So it takes the estimated betas and predicts everyone's linear predictor in the data set. After sorting my linear predictors, I can then make a scatter plot of my deviance residuals, d resid as a function of x beta, my linear predictor. While these are highly skewed and not that informative, we can use them to look for severe outliers in this data set. Similarly, suppose I were interested in including total cholesterol in my model. I could use the martingale residuals to help inform how total cholesterol should go into my model. So the variable is tot call one total cholesterol at exam one. I can make a scatter plot of my martingale residuals versus total cholesterol and overlay a low S line. And looking at this plot, we see that there's not a lot of data in the areas where we see nonlinearities, so it might be reasonable to include a linear term for total cholesterol, but because when I overlay my low S line, I do see some nonlinearity, it might be worth exploring whether a quadratic term for total cholesterol improves the model fit in this case.